Welcome to another MT's video. Um, it's raining in the background, in the background in the sky. <laughs> so if you hear rain or some weird sounds, it's just coming from that. Sorry about that, but I have to film today because I work every other day. Um, I'll get straight into it. But before I get into the actual products, I just wanted to mention that there's quite a few empties this year. I'm focusing on finishing products completely. So I just had a bunch of products that I had like a quarter left. So I'm just focusing on actually getting through them so that I can work through new products properly. Um, yeah, and that's why you've probably seen a few MT videos before this and there might be a few more coming up in relatively quick succession. So first I'm going to start with a product that I actually don't like at all and it was really expensive. Uh, it's the Estee Lauder Renutrieve um, Ultimate Diamond Revitalizing Mask. Don't even ask me why I bought it. There are just a few times in a year where I'm having like maybe a rough day and it just leads me to some reckless spending. I try not to do it often, but every once in a while it happens. This mask is a result of a reckless day. The actual product is totally fine. Like it's essentially like a black mineral clay mask that has like gold and pearl powder and black diamond truffle. So they've loaded it with, with a bunch of like exotic sounding ingredients, but the actual purpose of the mask is to be moisturizing, is to have a bit of an exfoliating effect. And it does all that really well. It's just, it was like 600 Australian dollars. So it is like nowhere near worth that money. You know, if you're somebody with a high amount of disposable income and you want a pampering mask, that smells nice and feels nice. It comes with a little brush so that you like circuit, so you go through a circulation process before applying it. So there's a whole ritual to it, but for an average consumer, this mask does absolutely nothing worth it. You know, you'll get a little bit of a glow from it, very temporary. Um, so very much a regret and I don't suggest anything from this brand pretty much at all. And by brand, I don't mean Estee Lauder overall, just their Renutrieve line is so expensive with probably nothing going on that's super worth it. I've actually tried a few products and none of them have stood out. Next is a small Australian brand for body or specifically body breakout. So it's the Will & Zoe Body Breakout Spray. This is basically a niacinamide spray um, that's very light, you know, watery. The spray mechanism is really Really good and I can get around in different angles for it. I really enjoy this during warmer months. Sometimes lotions just get a little bit heavy or like I can't be bothered applying them when it's hot outside. So this is a really express way of getting a bit of a body treatment. Um, and, and you're also supporting like a small Aussie brand at the same time, which we love, right? There's like a matching body wash that's really nice as well that has a beautiful texture. So I'm a big fan of both of the products in the line currently. Um, and I hope to see them expand soon. Next is one of my all time favorite products and probably my favorite cleanser ever is the Build Skincare Bee Wash. I've spoken about this a lot. It's appeared in a few videos. It's all over my Instagram page. Basically, it's a non exfoliating powder cleanser that feels very creamy and luxurious on the skin, but it just feels very like cushiony and protective and like it's maintaining hydration and definitely not stripping, but it actually cleanses properly. So I absolutely love this product. I've gone through several bottles. Build is one of my favorite brands and Bee Wash is just such a highlight cleanser because there's really not very much like it on the market. You know, you might be thinking Toucher, Dermalogica, More Pacific, all those brands, but they all have some sort of exfoliating property. Bee Wash is made to be a gentle daily cleanser and it does it exceptionally well. Next is a product from, I think it's a Rensia, which is a cloud, which is the cloud body and scalp scrub. This had uh, like a rose herbal smell to it. So if you like very natural smelling scents, this doesn't really come across artificial at all and you might enjoy it. Um, Soco Glam sent this to me in like a PR package, so I wasn't really that aware of this brand. I think they're pretty new in K-Beauty. Um, they have some face cleansers that I like a lot more than this product. Um, this is yeah more of a body scalp scrub. I think it's terrible as a scalp scrub. It's very like it's just very slimy feeling in a way. On body it's okay because that moisturizing effect just washes off. But for hair it's you know not great. Um, but even as a body scrub, the particles were quite large. They didn't feel like they were actually exfoliating well enough, or at least not to the roughness that I prefer. So it's quite a gentle you know natural leaning product if that's your vibe great um, I think it's a little bit useless to be honest I would not gravitate towards it personally and I definitely wouldn't seek to buy it myself 
Next is the Violette Boom Boom, like milk, what do they call it? Boom Boom, yeah, three in one cream spray. Um, one of my favorite products. Like I, I don't think like toners and essences necess necessarily have a reputation of actually doing much on the skin, but I find this to be actually properly comforting and soothing. Helps a little bit with redness and just makes my skin feel moisturized without being too oily. Um, the spray mechanism is a little bit of a contentious issue because it's not the best sprayer. It's quite aggressive and I often end up spraying into my palms then apply to my face. So if you like a gentle mist, this is definitely not that. But I think the actual formula itself is really well designed. Um, one thing I don't like about Violette is they lean very much into clean beauty and I think their formulas they could be better if they were using just more classic skincare ingredients. The stability on this is not the best. At some point it started to separate, so the oil and water phase would come apart. Um, that happened towards the end of when I was using it, so not a huge issue. And when I'd shake it, it would come back together. But I think stability is something that brands are sacrificing in favor of clean ingredients. And that kind of pisses me off, to be honest. I'm, sh I'm sure I will end up repurchasing this at some point because I very much enjoyed the product inside. It's just I'm currently using the Ordinary Toner. I bought a little Ilia like face milk. I bought a Chanel milk. There's one from Dior that I'm looking at. So by the time I get around to it, I'm sure it'll be sort of six to eight months. But at some point, I feel like I will repurchase this. It's very much a product that I consider to be worth its price. Next is the Biologique Recherche Tolle Skin Moisturizer. This is a pretty unique product because it's actually sterile. So it's made for people that have very reactive skin or they maybe, or maybe you've gone through some sort of treatment where you can't use typical skincare. The actual formula is great. The ingredients they use, it's great. It's just the price point on this is like crazy. I don't even know how they arrive to it, like how they arrive there. Biologique is a luxury brand and it kind of breaks my heart that their price point is getting to a point that's very prohibitive of access and they are targeting luxury clients more specifically. You know, I don't love that. I think skincare brands should at least have some sort of spectrum where they can cater to everybody, you know, with certain products. Something like this, something like this, which is kind of like a dermatological product, I think should be a much lower accessible price point. Like it's hundreds of dollars for really a basic moisturizer and its real selling point is that it's sterile, which is great. And the product is great. Um, it's just, I wouldn't be able to justify this spend. Um, like BR were kind enough to send this to me so I was able to experience it. Um, but it would be difficult for me to actually recommend it unless you know you do have a lot of disposable income and a few hundred dollars on a moisturizer isn't a big deal for you. It's a good product. Next up is the Naturium Multipeptide Advanced Serum and one of my favorite skincare serums. Um, I think they've just done a great job of blending ingredients together. There's some copper, there's some like well-known peptides including the updated azurelline amplified and antioxidants too so it just ticks a lot of boxes for what i'd look for in a general skin health serum the texture is a little bit more of like an emulsion cream style so it also has like a plumping moisturizing kick versus maybe a gel serum that tends to be like more hydrating um, so yeah, I love the texture. It makes my skin feel really just soft, cushioned, you know, bouncy, plump, all the good things. Um, and I've enjoyed using it. So I already have a backup of this. I imagine I'll keep having backups of this. It's just a good value, everyday, well-rounded, sort of anti-aging, antioxidant support serum. Next is a Kerastase product, which is essentially like an anti-dandruff serum. Um, I don't have dandruff often. It's just because I have eczema, it's almost like my skin decides to freak out sometimes and that includes the skin or like my scalp. Um, so every once in a while it becomes a concern for me. I think it might be even environmental or like what's going on with air conditioning and all of that stuff. But anyway, um, this I did not like at all. So the texture was really pleasant. It's like a super lightweight gel, very high in alcohol though. And it, it would actually like, would make my scalp feel really tingly which I you know, didn't really enjoy that sensation. I didn't even find that it worked very well when I needed it. Um, I love the smell. I think the actual texture they've achieved is nice. I think it just could have been balanced a little bit better with the alcohol and moisturizing ingredients. So I would definitely not repurchase this and I wouldn't really suggest it to anyone. I'm like, I definitely feel like drugstore options would do a better option would do a better job. Next is the Make Beauty Solar Citron Lip Reset. And it takes me a really long time to go through lip products. So the fact that this one is empty is like rare. Um, it's a, like a gel to oil texture. It feels super 
smooth and comforting on the skin because it's a gel it just applies really comfortably and not sticky but then it's like the oil part of it is what nourishes overnight I like this a lot more than like the Laneige sleeping mask for example definitely one of my favorite lip products of really all time recently they brought out some new like flavors um this is the original solar citron which has like a tropical scent to it um a little bit citrus but a little bit like coconutty mangoey that kind of thing um just all blended in like a tropical scent so if you like that vibe you'll love this but now that they've got a bunch of other scents i'm sure there's like a flavor that you'd like if you're not a fan of tropical scents but the actual formula is really awesome. Next is Sunday Riley Pink Drink, which is a facial mist. Um, one of my favorite products of all time as well. It just has gentle refinement in it, loaded with peptides and antioxidants. So it's like a serum in a mist. Um, it is a little bit clarifying, but not in a way that I would say it's like exfoliating. You might notice gentle exfoliation over a very long period of time, but certainly no risk of sensi sensitization, in my opinion, at least. Um, love this product. I've gone through several bottles. Sunday Rally sometimes send me some, sometimes I buy them. I usually wait for a sale if I'm buying it because it is a bit pricey. But I, would, I guess I would compare this to the SK2 Facial Treatment Essence. SK2 is a little bit more hydrating and kind of plumping from the inside out whereas this is going to be more actually clarifying and it just helps um, it just helps with congestion and toning down some of the redness in my skin next is the shantakai flower harmonizing cream and i think it's actually one of the better luxury moisturizers around uh, it just has this enveloping kind of skin feel but it feels very weightless so it's easy to layer but still intensely moisturizing the thing is though that it reminds me so much of the build skincare b cream that i have no reason to buy a luxury version excellent product i'd mainly suggest this if you can't get build or if you just really want a rose sort of scent in your skincare because shantakai signature is of course rose extracts but from an actual functional perspective this operates almost in an identical way to build b cream so yeah i just have no reason to buy it but i loved using it and speak of the devil next up is an empty of the build skincare b cream my favorite moisturizer ever as far as i'm concerned it is perfect if i could design a moisturizer it would be this it's just maybe i would have a fragrance version as an alternative as well i just love it so much it uses lamella gel it uses a lamella gel network as like a technology i guess in the formula and a lamella gel just has a really close affinity to the skin so it's a lot less likely to irritate but it also means that you get like longer term moisturization in a lightweight skin feel. So people who love a really oil rich cream, you won't really get along with B cream because it's definitely more of a balanced type cream where the humectants, the emollients and the occlusives are blended together in a way where, where they, where they moisturize intensely. You don't really, but you don't really notice an actual surface residue. So B cream allows for awesome layering, works really well over serums, under sunscreen, never had a problem peeling it is just the best moisturizer um actually and and if you don't if you and if you don't want to take my word for it it did appear in um so james welsh had like a best of video i think in november december last year b cream was one of his favorite moisturizers so he tries so much stuff and i feel like that's just a really good co-sign on the quality of b cream as a moisturizer next is the deviant skincare essential hydration serum um this was a pretty interesting product because it's a hydration serum but the texture was like an elastic creamy emulsion so it feels a little bit different than a lot of like hydration serums on the market um i enjoy this from its moisturizing perspective and it made my skin feel really nice um, but what ended up happening is when I use it in the morning I don't some of the thickness or whatever in the product was probably causing it to interfere or like conflict with my sunscreen I tend to wear mineral sunscreen so that it was peeling when I'd have this underneath so that's a bit of a shame because I think it's a well-rounded product and if you use chemical sunscreens or even probably other mineral sunscreens that just don't interfere um, you'd enjoy this product it's a really well designed one it's just it doesn't personally like work in my own skincare routine next up is the salicylic acid wash from peach slices which is like the affordable brand of peach and lily um, sadly I did not like this at all the texture was very basic like the most basic gel you could think of in a cleanser format that's what this is it also had a really bad like raw ingredient smell 
Now, I'm not going to like knock off points from a brand for being fragrance free, but just the combination of raw ingredients they used made this very unpleasant. I guess the thing is, if you're maybe a teenager or early 20s and you're not that fussy on textures or you're fine with like a run of the mill basic cleanser, there's actually nothing wrong with this, you know, product. I ended up using it as a body wash. It's just I'm a bit older now. I'm okay investing a little bit extra in more refined formulations. So this is a basic cleanser, you know, take that how you will. <laughs> Although I do love that it contains 2% salicylic acid, but I think in general, I prefer salicylic acid in a leave-on anyway. Next is the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Rescue Solutions. So this is like a newer entry of the Advanced Night Repair Serum that I think just has slightly higher active components in there. Um, I quite enjoyed this product. It was a little bit more fluid rather than like a gel serum of the original. And I ended up using it as an essence. So it had this sort of silky, slightly slippy feel. I did find that this helped with like calming my skin down and just making it more soothed and comfortable. It's just like, again, a price point. So do I like it enough for what they're charging? Probably not. I can see myself maybe rebuying this again if it's in a Black Friday sale or something like that. But they actually, but Estee Lauder actually have a new like night mask or night cream or something coming out within the advanced night repair family so i think i'm more likely to buy that instead of this just to see how i go with it if you are an estee lauder fan though and you enjoy the advanced night repair family i actually think this is a good product but i also wouldn't say that you need to double up so if you're already using the anr serum there's probably no reason to use rescue solution but just to keep going on with this thought if you're like new to estee lauder i think the rescue solution is better than the ANR serum. So yeah, if that were if that made any sense at all, I'm not sure. I have to watch this back, but let me know in the comments if you have any questions, because I feel like I am saying things without saying anything. Next is the Phytosurgeons Regenerative Facial Oil, which is like a flagship product for phytosurgeons, and they're a small brand out of Canada. And um, I think this is a really good face oil, and it celebrates blue tansy, which is one of my favorite in ingredients to see in face oils. Blue tansy has that blue color and has that sort of medicinal, slightly sweet floral scent. Definitely one of my favorite oil extracts to look out for. Um, the whole point of this oil is to be intensely moisturizing, nourishing, help a bit with skin barrier, discomfort, all of that stuff. I'm just not personally like a facial oil user. I tend to have one in rotation every now and then just for some variety in my skincare. And I'm currently using one from Biologique that I absolutely love that I feel like properly makes a difference in my skin. Regenerative facial oil is really for the people that enjoy facial oils in their routine regularly. Just a few drops and it just a few drops and it enhances the moisturizing power of nearly everything over it or under it. So I think this is a really good quality oil. It's just that I am not personally much of a facial oil user. The whole reason I actually emptied it is because I ended up using it as a pre-shave oil because I just wasn't getting through it fast enough and it worked out really well for that. I might actually even rebuy Phytosurgeon's oil specifically to use for shave. Next up is the Equal Reaction PHA Serum. Um, this was a good, well-rounded hydration serum, a pretty classic gel texture. I didn't find it exfoliating at all. I know sometimes when you see PHA, it kind of implies it might have a bit of an exfoliating effect, but I do think this product was designed more with moisturization hydration in mind it's a well-rounded ingredient list at a really affordable price point so i think this is a good option to explore i guess i didn't find it like i guess i didn't find it special enough to hold a position in my routine long term i very happily finished it and used it and if you're looking for like an affordable hydrating option especially as an alternative to like hyaluronic acid or something i think this is a good one to explore but yeah just personally not one that i'd need to gravitate towards long term uh, there are some key ingredients that i'm looking for personally that aren't really in here and its star feature which is the phas is something that i already have in lotion p50 that i use regularly so it's just kind of overlapping a bit as well Next up is another product from Build Skincare, this time Bee Balm, which I call Halo in a Jar. Uh, basically, and I've spoken about this so much, but it's a gelled squalene oil in like an ointment 
format. So think Aquaphor or like the CeraVe ointment, very much like that, but it celebrates squalene. So the price point is a little bit higher on Bee Balm, but I think like the composition of it is better. And of course, squalene is actually a little bit more expensive than some of the ingredients in the other ointments. So what Bee Balm does is that because of the gelled effect, it feels much lighter on the skin. So you still get this like ointment so you still get this like ointment feel, like it's definitely still oily, but it's not greasy. So I don't know if that makes sense because it's like, I think sometimes when I've spoken about it, people expect it to feel like nothing, but you still will get like a surface feeling of bee balm because it is actually like covering the skin or like hovering over the skin like an ointment would but just the way that it's being blended means that that feeling doesn't feel suffocating. So it's still like light. It feels like my skin is still breathing through bee balm, but also gaining all of this extra nourishment, moisturization and boosts every moisturizer that I use under it. So this is a product that I love. It's like a must have, especially when I'm using retinoids to help with retinization or just like the dryness that comes with Tret. Um, and I pretty much recommend this to everyone. And I guess maybe just to discuss build a little bit. Um, some Sometimes people think it's my brand because I rave about it so much and I love the product so much, but I just think they're that good. Like. Um, I randomly stumbled across Build due to some like Instagram drama that they had with an esthetician. Um, and I started to then use the products. I got to know Jonah, who's the owner and the formulator. Um, so he actually develops the products from scratch. They're made in Canada. Um, it's all original. He's a chemist himself. He had a bi he went to school for biology and worked for toxicology for Health Canada. So it means a lot to me that whatever like platform I have, and YouTube is still new, but on Instagram it's a little bit bigger, whatever platform I have, to be able to use it to support someone and to support a brand that actually needs that, it just means a lot to me. And that that's like why I'm happy to be here, happy to keep content happy happy to keep doing content happy to keep featuring brands because like CeraVe doesn't need more support but if we can rally around the small brands that's really what this is about because we want more competition we want more originality and we want people that actually have devoted their their whole education and really life to science we want them to thrive so yeah that was a whole like random spiel but build just connects with me on like a level that is in my dna now um yeah and again just to confirm i have no like financial relationship with build i've joked with jonah that if i win the lotto i'd have to beg him to let me invest in the company but as it stands now, I'm just a big fan. I have become friends with Jonah through my obsession, but I didn't know him before. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just been one of my favorite things is getting to know him, getting to see the brand grow. And I can't wait to see their next product, which will be, oh, spoiler, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say, but that's been an excellent product that I've been using for the last couple of months. So I can't wait for everybody to experience that. Wow, I probably wasted five minutes talking about Build, but there you go. <laughs> Next up is like a treatment moisturizer from Biology Recherche, and it's their Creme Vert Espoir their soothing and anti-redness face cream. So what I like most about a lot of the products in the BR range is that they are actual proper like treatment style creams. Although I was complaining earlier that their price points are pretty ridiculous and they are, unfortunately they are a luxury brand. But I guess the nice thing with Biologique is that unlike something, but unlike say Estee Lauder or some of the premium L'Oreal brands that I think really focus on like just the, that I think really focus just on the prestige of using it. Biologique to me is actually a functional luxury brand. So if you're investing in the products, I think you're most likely going to see actual skin changes or skin improvement. So I feel a little bit less guilty recommending, recommending Biologique. They have sent me some products, this particular moisturizer I purchased myself because um, redness is something that I deal with at different severities, you know, at different times of the year. Um, right now I'm using their Creme Derma Purifiant, which deals a little bit more with congestion and inflammation. So it's more of a purifying cream. Whereas this creme is more for sensitized skin, signs of rosacea, and it's just a really lightweight, well-rounded moisturizer. What I will mention though, and this is true of a lot of Biologique's range, is that it is 
like developed around layering. So if you're using this moisturizer and it could technically double as a serum and a moisturizer in one, the texture is light. So it's more like a gel cream. So if you really crave super nourishing, intense, very rich products, that's really not where this would sit for you. So you'd probably either need to have an oil or another serum underneath or something like that. But I think a lot of people who are dealing with rosacea actually probably appreciate a lighter texture because sometimes rosacea skin can get very heated or fierce feel just very suffocated and BR have designed this in a way to just be really cooling and comforting on the skin and I and I rate it and I love it a lot. Next up is another Biologique product and it's their Lay SR which is a purifying cream cleanser from the brand. It's a little bit newer for the brand and it does target kind of more congestion prone skin types. My favorite cleanser from BR and my favorite cream cleansers overall is their Lay VIP 2 but that has a little bit more of like a fluid milky texture where you can maneuver it around and it has a lot of playtime and you can just like really massage it in. Uh, Lay SR is kind of like using a moisturizer on your skin. So it's not my favorite sensation. I'm not sure they nail this texture 100%. Its real benefit is that it just rinses off quite cleanly for a cream cleanser. While I enjoyed using this and I would happily use it again, it's definitely not my favorite and I don't think it's worth the price point they're asking for it. And the other thing is I had big issues with the pump. So when I got to like about here, um, like just under halfway, it would basically stop pumping properly. So that's not great, especially for a product that costs this much. So again, I'm not sure that the viscosity even matches the container that it's in. So out of every, so the key takeaway is that I recommend Lay VIP 2 not really Lay SR. Next up is an anti-aging serum from Institute Esterterm. Um, so this contains some interesting like protein related ingredients. So I've actually forgotten the story now, but when I was buying this, it appealed to me because it was quite novel and unusual. Usual. The texture of this is quite nice. It's like a milky serum, so it had both a hydrating and moisturizing kick. But but sadly, the scent they've gone with or the fragrance they've gone with smells very old-fashioned. It's like super floral, very off-putting. It's quite strong. I'm not opposed to fragrance. It's just I think we're at the point where I think we can do better than a generic floral scent. And the other thing is that the period after opening... Um, and the other thing is that the period after opening is only two months, which... I mean, I don't necessarily go through skincare product that quickly. Um, you know, if you're planning to use it day and more, if you know, if you're planning to use it morning and night, then you might get through it. But I kind of had this extended through to three to four months and then had to stop using it. So that's not ideal. It's way too expensive to only last two months. We need more stability than that. So yeah, or, you know, make a smaller jar, make it cheaper, something. But at this price point with only two months of use for novel technology, not something that I would repurchase. Next up is another kind of goofy purchase, one that I also made during probably having like a rough day at work just to make myself feel better. Um, it's the La Prairie Cellular Hydrolift Firming Mask. So this is an intensely, intensely moisturizing mask that a very rich cream that you can actually use as an overnight sleeping mask or moisturizer. So I actually enjoyed using this. It's, a, it's an effective moisturizer, but, but La Prairie also goes way overboard with their scent and their fragrance is like, it hits you in the face. It goes up your nostrils, goes into your brains. It's like, like, no, they've gone way overboard. So yeah, I would not use this just because of the fragrance load. Um, you know, I think when I talk about enjoying fragrance, I mean like a little hint so that when I'm cleansing my face or using a product, it like is in the background there, but it's not necessarily like knocking me out. Um, so this La Prairie product, I, I think the design of it is not modern enough, so I would not repurchase it. Um, there was actually still a little bit left in the jar just because I could not take the scent anymore. And ultimately the ingredients in there they were just serving to moisturize so did nothing special you know again if you're somebody that enjoys splurging and you're and you enjoy super floral scents then maybe you'll enjoy it but as a general skincare user this is definitely a no need waste of money La Prairie overall isn't that isn't that exciting they have a couple of products that interest me but mostly I think they're there for prestige clients only 
And lastly, I'll finish on a product that I enjoyed a lot. It's the Peach and Lily Copper Serum. So this is like one of the blue copper serums that is a gel texture. It's super hydrating and kind of bursts on the skin. I very much enjoyed using this. I think the ingredient profile is super interesting. Lots of peptides and antioxidants blended together. Basically all the things that I look for for like a general daily like skincare serum. The only thing is that at the moment um, I'm using the Naturium Peptide Serum. Geek and Gorgeous sent me their new power peptides. I've just got a few kind of peptide products that I'm running through. So this one I very much enjoyed. I can see myself buying again, but I can also see myself getting distracted by something else. So it's a little bit of like a to be confirmed. Definitely a memorable serum from the last few months and I very much enjoyed using it. And I think if you're in the market for something like the Ordinary Buffet, but you just want to switch it up a little bit, then this Peach and Lily one is a great one to explore and they've done a great job. We finally reached the end of the video. Um, I, I really don't know if I've said anything helpful or even explained the products that well. Well, so please do let me know in the comments if you have any questions about anything and I'm already looking at the counter in front of me and I can see a bunch of other products that only have a little bit left so I assume I will have another empties video coming up pretty soon it's one of my favorite things to watch even just watching people ramble is always like interesting so yeah I don't know again I don't know if it's been helpful but I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me and having a little bit of a chat um yeah so I will see you in the next video